Palm Sunday, Year B. From the Gospel according to Mark, why was the ointment wasted in this way? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's a lot of conversation about waste and proper use in our Gospel readings for today. We hear in the Palm Gospel that the Lord needs the donkey he will ride into Jerusalem and will send it back immediately to the place from which he's borrowed it. We hear several examples in our Passion Gospel. The woman with the jar of ointment may or may not be wasting it when she breaks it open and pours it out on Jesus' head, for example. All of these questions about waste and use point to the question at the very center of today's gospel, of our worship throughout this holy week and indeed throughout our lives as Christians. What use is the passion and death of Jesus Christ? Could not his body, his his human life, have been put to better use, we might ask, if he had made good use of the authorities' decision not to seize him during the festival? as an opportunity for a strategic retreat and instead spent a so-called full life on earth in service to the poor. The Lord, as it turns out, has need of the broken jar. The Lord has need even of Judas' betrayal and the disciples' sleepiness and Peter's denial. For the Lord has need of his own experience of brokenness and betrayal of lonely anguish and abandonment, so that, like ointment, his love for us might saturate every aspect of our shared human experience. Times when we feel as useless as a broken pot, the human betrayal manifold in the whispering of the crowd. Times when we feel the insult and the spitting. This is the human abandonment, in the midst of which we must remind ourselves that the not yet evident vindicator nevertheless is near. This is the emptying Jesus underwent, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. The Lord has need of our experience too, not because God needs someone to suffer in payment for our sins, but so that God might demonstrate faithfulness, going where we go, and refusing to be parted from us even in death. What the Lord needs is to demonstrate that he is not only able to rescue us from the hands of our enemies, but also to open the gates of our experience. That it is only in entering, receiving as his own completely without reservation, that our God can faithfully accept our sacrifice. Let us therefore open to the Lord the gates of righteousness. He will, indeed he has, entered them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.